Hello everyone, and welcome back to my third-ish part of my tier list series. As you have probably noticed by now, I am not calling this the definitive third part. That is because I have decided to split the third part into two smaller parts. This video will only include the A tiers, while the next and final video will only include the S tiers. I have explained why I have decided to make this decision in the description. Watching the previous two parts is not required in order to watch this video. If you want to see my criterion for judging each part, I highly recommend that you watch the first part of this tier list, obviously after watching this video. If you want to know which parts have already been covered without going back, here are the parts that I have covered in my first and second parts. If you like this series and want to see similar content in the future, be sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Any little bit of contribution means a lot to me. With that being said, let's get straight into this video, starting and ending with the A tiers. Everglades National Park in Florida. This park is borderline B tier due to the ecological risks which are threatening the park's health. Many people know about the massive issue caused by the invasive Burmese pythons. Unfortunately, the problems run much deeper than invasive species. Water disruption, pollution, and erratic weather patterns are also putting the park in a precarious position. When considering all of those factors, I initially wanted to put it in B tier. I realized, though, that Everglades is, arguably, the most unique park in the country. Everglades is not just a unique within the U.S., but it's unique within the entire world. Due to that reason, I could not justify putting this park in a lower tier. I just wish that the Park Service and the state of Florida would take more precautions to protect this extremely rare and valuable ecosystem. A tier. Rocky Mountains National Park in Colorado. Rocky Mountains show the literal and figurative high points of Colorado. It is an admirable, iconic park that shows why Colorado is one of the best states for nature lovers. Easy A tier. Kings Canyon National Park in California. This park is good. It has a lot of cool cliffs. It has the cool Kings Canyon, of course. I just think that it gets a little overshadowed by the other Sierra National Parks like Yosemite and Sequoia. Other than that, it's a good park. Go A tier. Redwood National Park in California. Trees! This time, however, the trees are really, really tall. In fact, the tallest tree in the world is located within this park. Pretty epic, not going to lie. A tier. Zion National Park in Utah. While this is the last park alphabetically, it is the first park for being the best in Utah. Its colorful cliffs, stunning views, and fascinating landscapes makes this a shining gemstone in the Colorado Plateau. Additionally, Zion features some of the narrowest canyons and crevices found anywhere in the country. Easy A tier. Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky Out of the three cave national parks in the United States, I would consider this cave to be the best. One might think that it's strange to say that considering that there's nothing particularly unique on the surface level. Instead, I'm only talking about the longest cave in the entire world. It's almost twice as long as the next biggest cave. And it's also almost exactly 420 miles long. Yeah. Major props to this cave and this national park. A tier. Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee and North Carolina. This is my favorite national park east of the Mississippi River. Before visiting this park, I would have assumed that it was going to be C tier max. After visiting, I will have to say that this is one of the most surprisingly beautiful parks in the U.S. Since this is a deciduous park, you can get different flavors of this park in each of the seasons. 
From flowering meadows in spring to spectacular colors in autumn, this park provides a wholly unique experience in every season. I would definitely say that this is a park that you have to see in person in order to fully appreciate. A tier. Haleakala National Park in Hawaii. This is another national park that I have actually visited. Though I only drove up to the summit, I still believe that this park is worthy of being in A tier. After driving through the clouds, you come across the dark red and brown surface of Haleakala's summit. What the heck? You would believe that you're standing on Mars. However, one look around and you can see that you're surrounded by bright blue waters and green mountain slopes. Haleakala also includes impressive rainforest environments along its flanks that resemble paradise itself. This park is definitely an A tier. Death Valley National Park in California. This park is one of the most famous and infamous parks in the entire country. That is because this park is the hottest park. Why is it the hottest park, you might ask? Because it's the hottest park in the world! Extraordinarily dry conditions combine with unique geography in order to turn Death Valley into what could only be described as one giant furnace. Furnace Creek, a settlement within the valley, recorded the hottest world air temperature at 134 degrees Fahrenheit, also known as 56.7 degrees Celsius. Besides the sweltering heat, Death Valley National Park also hosts beautiful vistas of the dry valley. Overall, Death Valley is a very special national park in the U.S., and it should be farther appreciated. A tier. That concludes the third ish part of my U.S. National Park tier list. In the next and final episode, I will be going over my S tier national parks. If you want to witness that extraordinary video, be sure to subscribe to the channel in order to catch it when it drops. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!